So hi, so my name is Elliot. Yeah, we work for, I work for University College London. I'm a senior learning technologist and uh, uh, product owner of uh, UCL's new theme, which is what we're going to be talking about today. I'm joined by my uh, colleague, uh, Stuart. Do you want to say, introduce yourself maybe? Or? <laughs> hi, I'm Stuart. The more I do UX stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we rehearsed this many times, don't worry. <laughs> Um, cool. So we're going to be talking about our theme. Here's a bit of a run through of what we're going to be talking about. So we'll give you a bit of the UCL uh, context, a bit about the UCL design uh, system, which we'll talk about more. And then we'll get into some of the, you know, the UX approach that we took. So top task analysis and benchmarking, the initial designs we tested with users, uh, with learners, and then the redesign um, that we did. Uh, and then a bit about evaluation, how we're looking at this going forward. And then there will hopefully be time for uh, Q&A. So to start it off, so UCL uh, context. Uh, so uh, UCL, like a lot of universities um, and institutions uh, in the UK and the globe, I guess, uh, were you know, needing to update to Moodle 4 uh, to get a lot of the benefits, the security, um, and all these things. So we updated uh, to Moodle 4.2 in July uh, 2023 uh, from Moodle 3.11. Uh, and in part of this update, it was a good process or a good chance to update the theme. Uh, and we also were, we had some general ideas that we wanted to target. Obviously, the landing page makes sense to improve uh, and the dashboard and the My Courses, that split that was on Moodle 4. You know, what could we do with the dashboard to make it more about personalized learning uh, and maybe build functionality within there? Uh, so we also had some business requirements. A big one was the UCL design system. And we put beta because it was a, a developing design system. Uh, and that was one of the challenges. Uh, we also wanted you know, marketing spots to advertise events uh, at, at our campus, at, at university. We want to advertise them on Moodle. Uh, and to alert users when things occasionally uh, are broken. So that's pretty key uh, business requirement. Uh, the other thing is U UCL is pretty big. Uh, we're in the Northern Hemisphere, um, just to make that point. Uh, and uh, the active users um, are about, you know, close to 40,000 a day, uh, 70,000 browser sessions, uh, plus 5,000 courses for the academic uh, year, each year, uh, and about 150 plugins. Um, uh, so, you know, it's an important Moodle to our users, and this update was definitely a team effort, uh, bringing it together, and we wanted to make improvements uh, for our user base and make sure things kept working. So number two is the design system. Um, do you maybe raise their hands? Do people ha uh, know what a design system is? Uh, and do they have one? Maybe keep your hands up if you have one in your uh, workplace or institution. Okay, sweet. I know Moodle's kind of got a design system which looks excellent. Uh, this is kind of like UCL's uh, design system. It gives you a sense of some of the, like the components. Um, so this helps us you know, across UCL when we're building different systems, including Moodle, to create uh, components with you know, similar UI uh, keep to brand, keep a strong identity. So this was kind of what the UCL's design system was looking like. Uh, it was developing, so that was a, something we had to keep on, on top of. Uh, but that, um, this is kind of what we wanted, you know, we had in the back of our head that we wanted uh, the new Moodle, the new theme to look like. Uh, this was kind of interesting because on the left is kind of, you can't really see the image, but maybe you can see the kind of colors, key colors and the feel. Uh, this is Moodle 3.11 at the time. You compare that to the design systems, you're like, whoa, there's quite a big difference here. Uh, you know, so we actually found through our UX research, which Stuart's going to talk about in a sec, that uh, when students were kind of, you know, they're going through the apps and the different web estate of UCL, and then they come to Moodle, uh, they feel like they're stepping outside the university and going somewhere else, which is a re you know, really bad ex experience. And one student even said it kind of felt like they were going to this uh, dodgy environment for their learning. So that's something in the back of the head we wanted to improve on. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, what from the old Moodle could we keep? What was the key functionality that we wanted to keep? And what areas did we want to improve on? Uh, and so that's where we started with uh, uh, top task analysis and benchmarking. Cool, thank you very much, Elliot. So top task analysis and benchmarking is about finding out what the hell your users want to use your site for. Um, you choose what to measure, which is what people use your website for. You measure it based on its ease of use. How easy are those tasks to perform? And decide based on that evidence what to improve. If people say they can't do something and it's a real problem, you should probably fix it. 
So if lots of users find it perhaps hard to find where their feedback and grades are in Moodle, it might be a real thing, we'll tell you later. Um, <laughs> try and build something that improves that, test it with the users, the prototypes and things, and then iterate. This is a very important cycle. Um, <clears throat> so we did an online survey, we just built a block in Moodle HTML block with a link saying, hello, tell us what you think. We asked some questions. How often do you visit UCL Moodle? Because we wanted to know. What's the main task you visit UCL Moodle to do? How easy do you find it? What's your favorite thing about UCL Moodle? And what's the worst thing? Um, I'm not gonna show you the full results, but Elliot can if you're nice and buy him a drink later. Um, we intend to repeat this server every three months to measure as part of our baseline and we keep measuring it and then we know if we're doing better each time. And we hopefully we never do worse. So what did we find out? Students actually loved UCL Moodle. Elliot said some nasty things about the design but some of them referred to it as affectionately retro. <laughs> and I, I hold that in my heart, I'm like cool. Um, learners have UCL Moodle open all day in a tab next to them so they have like a tab. When we were interviewing them, they're showing us and going, oh, in this tab, I've got UCL Moodle open. They just have it open all day. Um, the top tasks we talked about, course content, activities, feedback. What did they like about it? Ability to locate all the modules. It has all the information I need. How easy was it to use? So we got a 3.96 out of 5 scale. I mean, that's, that's damn good, man. Um, and then the things I didn't like about it are exactly the same things I guess most people think about Moodle. It looks clunky, old, inconsistent, which now, you, now Moodle's got a design a UX team. We're going to fix Moodle, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we repeat that every three months. Um, the initial design. We needed to test the initial design with learners. Whoops. Okay, user testing. How do we do user testing? So we do. We did one-to-one -one moderated distance user testing with learners. Um, each session was 30 to 45 minutes over Microsoft Teams this time. Sessions conducted remotely. They're all recorded, and we capture qualitative and quantitative data. Um, I show this map. This bleh, diagram all the time. After you test with five users, the kind of value of of usability problems kind of starts to level off. Once you've got five, it starts to repeat itself. You kind of do three interviews and you're like, yeah, these people are saying the same thing as everyone else, even if you're testing from different demographics. And when you get to five, you're just like, yeah, they're just telling us the same information now. Can we do something else, please? Um, so yeah, <laughs> here's what it looked like. That's me at the top. This is Roy, who was testing. There's Elliot being very nice and taking excellent notes. Really good. Um, it gives you feedback that workshops and focus groups don't because users can speak honestly and openly without being biased by the people in the room. It's really powerful seeing real people try and use the system. Um, I like seeing them go like, have wrinkles on their forehead or get a bit like, oh, what, what is that? Why am I doing this? And watching their eyes um, it gives you real empathy. You don't get unless you do real user testing. Um, we had a facilitation guide. We asked them three common tasks from that top task survey. Um, the, design, the tasks were designed to go through the main page elements and it, each, pa each page participants was asked to stop, tell us what they could see and think out loud. So we asked them, whereabouts would you go without clicking? What would you expect to see there without clicking? Then we asked them to click and tell us, what can you see? Was it what you expected to see? Just follow that. We also did a debrief survey afterwards in Microsoft Forms and asked them to fill in um, ranking the elements in order into importance. How useful were they? And what else would they like to see? So, um, some scores on the doors. Elliot? Do you want to do this one? Yeah, landing page. Yeah, so uh, we're testing uh, the initial design. So this is the landing page, you know, where the user goes to log on. Uh, it contained a login link, a carousel, course library link, free courses link, new courses, site announcements. Uh, so let's see how it did. Dun, 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 dun. So uh, users were pri primarily looking for their courses. Uh, kind of makes sense. And they focused on elements that kind of they thought would lead them there, but they actually often went to the wrong place. Uh, so an example is the, the course library. We didn't ex expect users to click on that. 
and that they were looking for their courses, you know, the courses they were enrolled on, makes sense. But that was actually uh, like a library of all the courses at UCL. So those 5,000 courses, I guess they could browse through them, find their 10 courses. It's going to take them a long time. So not ideal. <laughs> so we had to rethink this landing page for our demographic. Uh, but it's clear, okay, login link, get to the courses, that's, that's the key things. The other things, you know, less important. Uh, then the dashboard, yeah, we, we tested this initial di design on the left. Uh, site announcements, I guess for the, you know, for the business, yeah, up there. Uh, items accessed by my peers, sounds interesting. Uh, last access course, timeline, uh, core Moodle, uh, my courses update, search course catalog. Uh, so these are some of the designs. We put them in front of the students in the interview. Uh, what came back? So uh, again, the ranking of kind of what they found useful. So last access courses, my course updates. So again, you know, give me, give me my courses. Where are they? And then some of the other elements uh, down the page. Timeline was, hi was highly rated, uh, which we liked because obviously, you know, that's just Moodle functionality that we can use. Uh, and so the dashboard again, so participants just wanted to see uh, the courses as the primary requirement. Uh, anything that hinted at this was uh, rated highly. And then the second uh, most useful element was the timeline. Um, participants were unable to find their feedback and grades. So that was obviously a gap that we had. And some things such as, um, you know, items accessed by peers, that type of thing, that was kind of a distraction as an example. People didn't really know what that meant. So we knew some good ideas of what to keep and what to change uh, from these results. Back to you. Uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. This is a quote. So, okay, so I don't think this is for me. Maybe it's for someone else. Um, there were lots of good intentions in the elements we were trying to put on the front page and the dashboard to give information that we thought was useful for students. but. Um, by the time you've read through kind of three blocks of information and you're going, that one's not for me, that one's not for me, and you get to the bit that is for you, they were kind of often like in this state where it's like, oh, this mustn't be for me either. This must be for someone else. Um, yeah. Which was a bit of a shame. Um, <laughs> so the user journey that everybody wanted to do was log in, find their courses, open the courses, find the activity, open the activity and resources. That's kind of it. It's very simple. I think that's it. And our lessons learned were focus on the primary tasks that the users need to do. We know what they are. We did the research. Focus on the elements user need, making them prominent and better suited for the user needs. Because some of the the blocks and things, they're not necessarily suited for UCL students' needs. Be careful of adding content that makes users feel the page is not relevant for them. Um, be careful of adding miscellaneous content, which just makes the user journey harder, really. Um, this is um, Brad Frost. Um, this is one of his slides. So um, this is <laughs> what he described kind of um, a typical kind of corporate website as. <laughs> And maybe that's what users were saying about our design as well. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, death to this. This the presentation is called Death to B Death to BS, and everyone should watch it. Um, so we redesigned, focusing on the user needs. Um, here's the login page. We've got sign in, and then we've got the business requirement of the latest news, which, um, yeah, it's cool. Everything the users need and everything that they didn't find useful, we put in the bin. That's it. Um, yeah, here's on the left the dashboard, and then my courses page, we've got rid of drawers, um, put content that users want to see on the page, made a grid instead of drawers, and it also feels more UCL. This, this pretty much looks like that UCL design system that we saw. Um, primary things users needed, that was uh, last visited courses, deadlines and feedback. We, it's, that's it. It's like, how do you find this anymore? Well, you look with your eyes. It's there. Um, Elliot, you felt strongly that the primary content should be to pick up things. <laughs> yeah. Explain. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. So, uh, so this is a, uh, a block that we built. Uh, it's a bit like the you know recently accessed uh, courses or recently accessed um, items or activities. Uh, we essentially combined them, and it was just a way. Obviously, students were looking for their courses, and uh, we didn't. We wanted to fulfil that need, but also we didn't want the dashboard to just be the my courses grid. <laughs> 
uh, we wanted some kind of you know surfacing of information that is relevant and helpful to the student so that, I mean this is just the obvious way and then we've kind of redesigned it to look more like UCL and and um, yeah, we've got a lot of positive feedback. I think we do intend to open source this. Jason. Um, Jason and Alistair in the room. Jason. Speak to them after the, got, the meeting. Are sourcing it? Yep. Cool. I think that was a yes. <laughs> cool. Um, here's a timeline. We made it look like a timeline. Um, because I think it doesn't look like a timeline in middle, but when you look at other sites, the timeline looks like this. Um, we cut out loads of the kind of redundant information and kind of just put the facts in. I say that, but I'm noticing P A Y O four six slash O. I don't know. <laughs> um, this is the feedback block. Students were like, I can't find my feedback um, from user testing. Um, it picks up Ooh, at the moment. Turn it in and assignment. I think there's an issue, ish, tracker issue in Jira to put quiz into it. So that'll either be me or Alex. Alex, can we put quiz in? No. <laughs> <laughs> Again, hopefully we'll be able to open source this, Jason. He's saying yes, okay, cool, that's good. <laughs> um, so when we showed these things to the students and kind of repeated the first lot of testing on their top tasks, and we asked them, what did you expect to see? Can you find it? Yeah, <laughs> it's just there, there's no messing around. Um, we've got the news block again, that's it. And we started to look at course pages as well. So here you can see the images that people put on the course cards. We show that prominently. We show the progress, the title, category. There's more information that will go in here that's UCL specific. And we haven't really done much with the next project. Jason, when are we starting formats? I can't wait. October, yes, get in there. And we'll be interviewing the students and the tutors about how they use formats. Um, but we want to look at other people's formats as well. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I have a you. Okay, so um, second last bit, so on the evaluation. Um, so as we kind of said, so with this benchmarking kind of uh, UX research process, we want to continue it uh, and constantly kind of build it into our daily process. Uh, so we've, you know, we've redesigned it now. We want to, you know, run through student, students through this and also course formats and start hopefully showing uh, improvements and also generating new ideas um, for our team to develop. Um, as part of this evaluation, uh, alongside, I guess in parallel, but also feeding into the UX research, we have a few other things uh, coming up, coming along. So this uh, might be hard to see, but uh, Microsoft Clarity heat map, uh, and just shows you for the um, landing page on the left and the dashboard, you kind of see the, the red colors where we find our users clicking through. Uh, and so we can just use this to kind of confirm our design and also kind of track its use. So I mean, the, on the landing page, we've obviously got the login button is kind of the, the key of focus area which is kind of what we expect which is good and then on the dashboard we see the recently accessed or, or pick up where you left off block in the yellow that's getting all the attention so users are finding that relevant and, and using that I think it'll be interesting in the uh, like assessment period we can track say whether users are going to the timeline and the feedback block so we can kind of see how our um, dashboard is being used it's got a lot of other features where we can look at like whether users are, sh are scrolling down so that we can show that okay those advertisement blocks are working or if they're not you know we can uh, do something about it so that's alongside our UX interviews uh, this graph is um, also another aspect. It was like reporting from the Moodle database uh, tables. So our course um, design includes the course image now at the top of the course page, uh, activity completion, and also the course summary. So we're surfacing that information in the theme. Hopefully users see the relevance and start using that more, but we are gonna promote it through our support and training teams as well. So this graph is just tracking that usage, which we can see is already going up. So hopefully it continues to go up. And these kind of elements, which add to the kind of a nice course experience, we can kind of continue to promote. Uh, and then we've also got quite an effective staff user group. So about 130 staff members. Um, that it's a Teams group that we provide a lot of asynchronous communication. And they've essentially uh, given rapid feedback on our demo environment uh, and the theme as it's evolved. 
Uh, it's just allowed us to get uh, you know, feedback, cons ideas, uh, constructive criticism, uh, and, you, and you can see some comments here, but just to get a flavor, that, that's kind of another channel of um, feedback that we're getting. Uh, and then again, we're doing a lot of other, a lot of things. So this is a system usability score uh, based on you know the standard set of multiple choice questions, and we ran it on the old Moodle, uh, and it got you know fairly good results. People like the old Moodle, and then we're going to run it on the new Moodle. Hopefully, see, show some improvements because uh, there were obvious areas to improve. So this. This score um, is kind of a bit divided. You can see from the pie chart, it was about the complexity of the old site. So users were kind of, some were saying it was complex. So hopefully with the new site, we can, because we have a clearer user journey that the theme is consistent with, hopefully we see improvements in these type of scores and we can, we can kind of demonstrate it uh, with this evidence. Cool, uh, and that's it for the presentation. Thank you so much. And if there are any questions, uh, we'll take them. Okay. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It was very inspiring. Uh, you showed us uh, a landing page with a timeline and feedback and pick up where you left off. And I was wondering how you made it. Is it a native feature or is it a specific development? I'm sorry if you said it that I didn't hear. <laughs> it's, a, it's a custom uh, block and it should be open sourced. And Jason and Alistair, oh, sorry, microphone. Hi, it's a custom block. Um, and Jason or Alist Alistair, are you, can, are you able to, to kind of, if, can everyone see Alistair? He can show you where any of the UCL plugins are that are open sourced, and so you can go and try them yourselves. Is that help? Oh, we didn't do that, we're not that clever. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, and this also shows courses that um, are hidden. The, the normal block doesn't, but say if you're a tutor and you're like editing a course, you can go back and you, this doesn't lie like the pickup boy, like the Moodle block. This shows you hidden courses and hidden activities. So if you're a tutor and you're editing something, but it's not live to students, it'll be there in that list, which is just like dynamite for me. Yeah. Yeah, congratulations for all this work and uh, this great presentation. I wanted to ask, uh, have you tested your new theme and the overall UX on the mobile devices and whether uh, your students are using mobile devices and if they are accessing it through the app or through a browser on their mobile? We have some stats on this in our Google uh, forms because we asked about this, don't we? Yeah, I think we find not a whole lot of usage through the mobile for various reasons. I mean, I guess uh, we ask students and they check grades, they might check grades very quickly, but they're not doing the more intensive perhaps learning activities that show up. Um, but we did test obviously, like say the nav bar, which we've worked a lot on, you know, responsibly that, you know, the theme wasn't messing up any of those things. I think that's uh, also been a focus of our accessibility testing as well to be aware of how, say, um, you know, it's a related topic, I guess, how the, if you zoom into 400%, how the reflow works and things like this. So we've, we've tried to use Moodle and uh, make sure the theme doesn't, yeah, change anything about that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yes, part of it, whether they also use the mobile app or uh, for the, the browser. The specific app, no, we don't support it. And we don't promote it. I mean, you could use it, but the, it would strip out the whole theme, I guess, as well. It kind of looks all right. I, okay. yeah. In the cycle of uh, UX design and uh, testing, development, and again, how do you work between the UX uh, team and the developer teams? How do you... What's the, pipeline? What's the pipeline from design system to actually code? Well. Don't be afraid. Answer. Uh, I mean, so I guess we're part of an agile team. Um, the main UX team are me and Stuart. Um, so I think we both do the UX design. I'd say Stuart's probably the main uh, developer. So we're, I guess we're kind of embedded in the process. I mean, there isn't a separation really. Uh, we make that's what I would say. Prototypes. So yeah, when we build prototypes, we don't 
necessarily build them in Figma. We tend to use CodePen or some of the live system because we like to test if the prototypes are accessible um, as well. So we like to test with live code. So we build live working HTML prototypes of things. It's uh, And then when we want to put them into Moodle, you just go copy paste into a mustache template and you have the same code that you were testing a prototype with. Great. Um, hi. Um, thanks for the session. It was very nice. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, we are going through the same uh, situation basically, but with the Moodle Workplace. So we're moving from 3.12 to 4.2. And uh, now we are in the prototyping phase. Uh, we're testing or we are in several iterations. And I wanted to ask you, um, did you fail anywhere along the way? Any tips? Would you do anything differently? Um, yeah, how did the whole process go? Because we've been eight months now in this. Thank you. Well, I guess our initial design had good intentions, as we said, and there, there were failures there. Um, but I think a lot, some of those ideas we have to flesh out more probably as well. So nothing was really like a, a mistake or we'd do differently, I think. Isn't it fail fast? Yeah, we just failed fast. We could build the most high value things and then the other ideas we knew. Some, some aren't going to work, but some just need to be you know, workshopped and, and thought about. I think one of our challenges was the design system, the beta phase, because that's being changed. So for instance, we moved, our, uh, I don't know if I have an image of it, <laughs> it's just kind of funny. I mean, one of the challenges was to actually just get the UCL uh, logo image to the top right, uh, which the, you know, took a bit of development. And now we know the design system is actually okay with us putting it on the left. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. And that one has to be black, so yeah. But we've, we've done that now, so we're happy. So, um, when you're doing your prototypes, yeah. we did a thing where what we did was we um, made, we took a screenshot of something like from Photoshop or PDF or anything and then um, shoved it into Moodle as an HTML block and just said, don't click on it, but tell us what you think of it. And um, even some like bit, you sketch on bits of paper, just stick them in as HTML blocks. Um, just put an image in and then fake it until you know it's the right thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know if that's helpful. I can't think of any other um, things off the top of my head. In uh, in that slot, in that um, page, uh, screen grab, or or in the other one where they have the overview of the courses, etc. And none there's the right hand side um, block drawer uh, extended. What is your take on block drawers? Or then did you? Um, Get rid of it. Uh, is there, are they important? What does your user you testing show? Yeah, uh, right. also in the former one, but maybe I just looked wrong. We took the block drawers off the dashboard because they are not good. They didn't test very well. That's it. I don't know if anybody else has tested with them, but on this page, certainly they didn't add value and it was better to just be a normal web. It, people, I think when people visit Moodle, especially students, they think it's a website. <laughs> so if it doesn't behave like a website and it has weird things like block drawers and whatever, then they get a bit confused and they don't use them. Um, but if it looks like a website, then they're happy. It's this idea of prototypicality. You know, why I'm on the web, just been to this website, go to another website, expect it to behave the same. If you put things in there that are a bit weird and aren't the same as other websites, then they're not going to like it or use it. Yeah. Does that help? <laughs> we're, we're keeping them on courses. We're just removing them on the pages where they are not useful. <laughs>